I don't know if I've expressed this a lot in certain videos that I've done, but I have a lot of concern about Splatoon now. And there's a lot of reasons for this. Now, Splatoon in general, at first everyone thought that it was the file size, which kind of threw me off. And while I do admit the file size of the game being so small did make me wonder about how much content it would have to offer, there's a lot of other things that are making me concerned about the longevity that Splatoon will have. One of the biggest things, of course, was voice chat being removed from the game when playing online simply because they don't want bad things to be said to people. It seemed like a typical way Nintendo would do things, but a little, uh, a little under the curve in terms of advancements in technology and just in reality of how games like this would work. I mean, it's a third-person shooter. You're playing online with friends. You're going to have to have voice chat in some form or fashion in order to get some kind of consistency going on, or else it's just going to be a fucking just a just a hell zone of just random shooters, paint flying everywhere. I mean, not to say that it won't be that, but it just seemed a little bit weird that Nintendo was willing to remove voice chat completely for the sake of, you know, they didn't want certain people's feelings getting hurt. Then make it so that you can have parental controls to turn it off, or make it so that you can choose to have voice chat off. That way you don't have to hear the bad things, you know? I, it just seems like a really weird stance for me. I know some people are going to argue, well, that's the way it is, you should deal with it. Some people will say, well, you know what, hey, it's not going to affect the game long term at the end of the day. Who knows, it just may. But there's a lot of other things as well, too. And the main thing being that Splatoon just, I don't know, man. It just the, more, the closer we get to the release day, the less hype stuff I'm seeing about it. Like, for example, when we were first shown the game, it looked amazing. It looked like it had a whole lot of original aspects to it. But those are the same original aspects that we've been getting shown month after month after month. And even though it's been months since the game was first announced, it looks pretty much exactly the same. There hasn't really been any real big groundbreaking thing that they've shown the game to have that's brand new other than, you know, maybe the Octolings and, you know, the Amiibo are cool too, actually. That's a really different way that the game could work. And then they showed a little bit of the single player mode, which kind of looks a little bit hollow in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. I'm not saying that it is. But that's just the way I view it. You know, if you disagree with me, then by all means, share it in the comments. But there's a lot that I'm concerned about with Splatoon. And the reason why it's hitting me so hard is because I actually do want this to be a successful game. Even though I do sound like I'm being a naysayer right now, I'm excited for Splatoon. I still am. Even though the hype levels have died down due to me not really seeing that much new content shown to us, that much game-breaking new content, still, I am excited. I feel like the, cu the character customization, however, is a little bit limited. Even though they do have a lot of clothing and outfits and whatnot, you're basically playing with the same character that everyone else is the girl with the you know long hair or the guy with the ponytail and it doesn't really seem like there's a way for you to customize that and i don't know i mean maybe i'm just being a little bit too picky about it you know nowadays we're more critical of games than ever before but splatoon just has my concern now this article that i'm being linked to by jahara he wants me to talk about this and i have not read this yet i only opened the article up in another tab so what we are going to be doing is reading through this article together and what he said is that the people need to know about whatever this article is talking about. Now, um, Gamnesia, this is a very prestigious news reporting website as well too, so we're both in for learning here. So let's see exactly what this is. Splatoon's multiplayer rules aren't customizable, and God, I mean, I'm judging way too early. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm just being ignorant and judging this game right off the bat, but from what that title sequence is saying, Splatoon's multiplayer rules are not customizable. This is another thing that makes me wonder about the longevity of this game. I mean, how the hell do you have a shooter which doesn't have changeable rules or different... I mean, I don't know. Well, it's too early to judge. Let's just read through the article first. I'm going to shut the fuck up now. I'm not going to say another fucking thing about Splatoon until we finish reading this article and I can analyze this information and kind of give you a constructed idea as to where I think this game is going to go with practices like this. Okay, so... Splatoon's user customization settings were discussed in a recent article by IGN, revealing new information about the various options players can expect when the game launches. Unlike Smash for Wii U, there is no custom match types to play privately online with friends. Unlike Smash for Wii U, there is no custom match types to play privately online with friends. Another issue brought up was the ability to change the look sensitivity. In Splatoon, these settings can only be changed before or after a match, a somewhat out-of-date feature. Experimenting to find the ideal look sensitivity will be problematic, as you will have to change it, enter a game, 
test it, exit the game, and proceed to change it again with a few loading screens here and there. A lot of other information about Splatoon has recently been unveiled, including dojo mode and the inability to transfer gear between modes. <sighs> the inability to transfer gear between modes. Unlike Smash for Wii U, there is no custom match types to beat to play privately online with friends. I can't play Splatoon in a private session with my friends alone. If it's just us and we don't want to play with anyone else, we can't do that. It's a little weird. I don't want to judge because like, here's the thing, right? Like from what it's sounding like, it seems like there's no way possible for you to have a bunch of your friends playing at the same time connected as a group. That may not be the case because let's say for example, I'm online and Kobe's online. I'm like, hey Kobe, you want to play some Splatoon? He's like, sure. So would we be able to pair up together and join lobbies always paired up as a party? Or is that not possible? Like if my friend is online as well too, can I hit him up and say, hey man, let's play a game and we always stay together? What if there's three of us, or four of us, or five of us, you know? Will we always go through these lobbies as a party? Or will it necessarily just be us always split up? Like, I'm sorry about the alarms, guys. This is New York City. This is the way things are gonna be. But from what I'm, damn, that shit is loud as hell. What's going on out there? There's always a criminal getting arrested or some shit. But um, from what I'm understanding about this whole thing, it's apparent that the online functionality in terms of like interactions with other people is going to be limited. But now it seems like it's going to be limited to friends as well too. Well, not limited to friends, it's going to be limited with friends as well because if I can't make a private lobby, then that means that if I want to play a game that's just me and my friends, that's impossible. So if there's six of my friends online and I want to play a game with them, I won't have a way to bring them into it. But here's the thing, Titanfall also had that issue when it was first released. And after the fact, Titanfall had a ton of DLC and downloadable stuff that made those features available over time. So maybe Splatoon is looking at a lot of downloadable content, customization and all that. And I think it's very possible that that could be the case. I don't want to judge too early, but these features do make me concerned. Especially considering that the inability to transfer gear between modes just kind of looks a little bit weird on paper. Like I can't take like a weapon that I earned playing deathmatch to the dojo mode. And I mean, and from what I saw the dojo mode, this is my own opinion, it doesn't look too solid in my opinion. You're shooting the balloons and it's a one-on-one -on -one thing where you have to shoot the balloon. I don't know. It, I, I'm not liking it too much like that. I mean, the, only, the most appealing thing did look like the, the crazy pandemonium matches where it's like a ton of people fighting each other. But will the game really last that long if there's really no way to communicate? I think it will still because I never really use voice chat in a lot of my shooters. I don't really even play shooters that much. But for people that do, is this something that will make or break the game for you? You got to let me know in the comments. I'm concerned about Splatoon. I'm not even going to lie. I don't want to judge it based off of all these things that we've heard because we don't know the specifics. I don't know if I'll really be able to not play with friends at all online. Or will it necessarily just be me paired up with only one or two and then I can travel through lobbies with them. I don't know those details, and I'm not going to totally judge the game based on that until we do. Um, the game comes out on May 29th, so it's not like we have to wait too much longer. Pretty much about a month from now, you know, a month and a week. So we'll see exactly what Splatoon will have in store very soon. The closer we get to the release though, the more lacking the game seems in terms of features, uh, functionality, um, like, like the, the, the sensitivity thing. The sensitivity thing, like, oh my god, man. I, I, god damn it. Like, that just seems really bad to me, man. Like, that, I mean, that, it didn't, at first when I read that sentence, it seemed like, okay, well, you know, it's no big deal. Change the sensitivity in one match, then leave the match and, you know, come back. But then it made sense to me when he was saying how you have to kind of feel out the sensitivity, you know? If you change it to one thing, and you have to go into a new game, then quit it and go through all those screens just to start it up again and then go through the changing the sensitivity again. It just seems really dysfunctional in my opinion. But we don't have the game in our hands. We can't truly judge it until we have it in our hands. But from what it's sounding like, it sounds real hollow, man. 
really hollow. The most appealing thing is going to be the aesthetics and how long will those really last on us, you know what I mean? Either way, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Let me know your opinions down below. Take care of yourselves and of course, as usual, please have yourself a damn good one.